In the first scene, two friends come to a mysterious looking island in search of a lost treasure. There is nothing but water on all sides, and not a single organism can be found. The buddies are slowly making their way to the island when it suddenly begins to move. The island turns out to be a big blue whale that has been tied by someone or something. Following that, the film flashes back a few weeks. A gorgeous white mare sprints across a wide wheat field at nightfall, leaving a trail of bright light behind it. The next morning, an elderly farmer summons his three sons to show them their damaged wheat field. Because their only source of income is being destroyed, the patriarch instructs his sons to stay watch at night in the hopes of catching the perpetrator. The brothers then entrust this duty to the youngest brother, John. John is terrified of the dark, and he realizes the magnitude of the task at hand. However, in order to gain his father's faith, he agrees to maintain his watch. Later that night, John starts up a cordial chat with the hedgehog he had saved earlier. While chatting, he observes the mare's shadow and hurriedly throws a rope in its direction. The rope suddenly tightens, and the mare drags John over the farms and meadows. At one point, he is taken through the heavens, where he can see the lovely village. John is entranced by the view and begins shouting with delight, but his joy is short-lived when the mare crashes and they both finish up in a bog. John is able to free himself, but the mare remains trapped. When John sees the unfortunate animal drowning, he abandons his purpose and goes to help it. He tries to drag the massive mare out by himself, but the beast refuses to budge. So he turns on a nearby wheat mill and eventually saves it. The mare, overcome with gratitude, releases a tear, which deeply affects John. He then frees the mare from its shackles, promising that it will no longer trample on their crops. After the mare has left, John looks out over the barren wheat field and understands he will have to bear the consequences of the disaster the following day. The morning following the event, John awakens in the stable to find two lovely black royal horses. As he takes in the sights of these creatures, he is startled to hear a voice in the background. He grabs a pitchfork and is ready to defend himself fast. When John gets closer to the source of the commotion, he is surprised to see a little humpbacked magical foal. He has the ability to speak like a human. Foal informs John that the mare he met earlier is his mother, and she has given him these two horses, with Foal himself accompanying him to support John. When the old farmer sees the plight of the ruined wheat field, he yells in despair, driving John to worry. Sensing the danger, Foal moves quickly, dragging John on his back as they dash away from the field at breakneck speed. Along the journey, John reveals his wish to sell the horses in order to get some much-needed income. Foal decides to assist once more and sends out a piercing whistle, summoning the horses to their location before John's family can apprehend them. With the gorgeous horses in tow, the gang embarks on a trek to the bustling market town in the hopes of finding a suitable buyer. When John arrives, he is inundated with bids from eager buyers desperate to own the majestic horses. However, out of greed, he decides to keep the animals and only sell them to the richest person in the neighborhood. The individual in question is discovered to be none other than the king. The horses capture the king's attention as he walks near the great palace. Instead of buying them like a gentleman, he sends his men to seize them, claiming that a poor farmer like John could never afford to buy the horses on his own. Dejected and without finances, John seeks assistance from Foal. The latter blows another whistle, calling the horses back to John's side. However, the animals knock the king over into a neighboring bag of flour in the process. Despite his rage, the king maintains his cool in front of the assembled people. John then suggests a swap, asking for two silver hats in exchange for the horses. However, one of the king's courtiers tells him that the horses will undoubtedly continue to run back to John. Taking this into consideration, the king offers him the prestigious position of the palace's most important groom. John is overjoyed to have been given this opportunity, and he accepts without hesitation. Because of the announcement, the entire crowd begins to shout for him. They think he's the animal whisperer. As John's popularity grows among the people, the king grows increasingly jealous of him and seeks a method to execute him. However, he cannot think of a good excuse to do so. But then his courtier comes up with an idea. He must dispatch John on a mission to catch the mythical firebird, according to the plan. Because it is an impossible mission, John will undoubtedly fail, which might be used to justify his execution. When the king hears this, he bursts out laughing and issues the order. When John finds out about the mission, he gets determined to complete it. The firebird has never been tamed by anyone, and this may prove to be an impossible undertaking, but John is keen to impress the townsfolk. As a result, the two started out on their expedition. They stop in the forest along the road to gather dream nuts to entice the firebird. John is intrigued and wants to try the nuts, but Foal prevents him, telling him that they work as a sedative. Following that, they trek all day until they arrive at the firebird's abode in a desert oasis. They see a warning regarding the existence of wet sand there. Regardless, John dismisses the dream and hides nearby. After a while, the magnificent bird emerges from the earth and begins to eat the snack. The nuts, according to the plan, begin to intoxicate the bird, but before falling asleep, it notices the two and begins to attack. John and Foal are nearly killed on numerous times, yet they always come to one another's aid. Because of the ensuing chase, the entire landscape is destroyed. Finally, the nuts knock out the firebird, allowing John to trap it with chains. 
The next day, John and Fole discover the Firebird, who is weak and crying a hot tear. According to Fole, the bird can only be hot when it is free. It loses all of its energy if it remains on the ground for an extended period of time. Hearing this, John feels sorry for the bird and chooses to let it go. The beast regains its fire and soars away in the heavens as soon as he removes the bonds, but not before leaving a fire feather for John. Now that the operation has failed, Fole advises them not to return to the kingdom, as doing so could lead to John's execution. However, our courageous but obstinate protagonist is confident that the fire feather will prove that they have captured the firebird. When they return, the monarch, as expected, orders their execution. John tries to establish himself by stating that he caught the bird but then released it out of compassion. The monarch, however, does not accept his account, and an executioner raises an axe to give the ultimate stroke. The majestic firebird then appears, spreading a dazzling light over the land. It heard John's cries for assistance and has now returned the favor. The folks are perplexed when they witness the firebird obeying John's commands. As a result, the king reluctantly lets John live and throws a feast in his honor. That night, John is hailed as a hero throughout the kingdom. As the king's rage rises, his courtier convinces him to send John on an impossible mission, to retrieve the king maiden, who lives in an ice kingdom atop a high rock. The king is confident that if John fails, he will have an excuse to execute him. So, the very following day, a messenger informs John of the king's new task, which he accepts without hesitation. After navigating the perilous high rock mountains, John and Fole arrive at the gate to the palace where the king maiden lives. However, they discover that the palace is blocked by a gigantic ice wall, making entry impossible. However, with the help of the firebird's feather, John is able to melt the ice barrier, causing a massive amount of water to spill out. Unfortunately, this turns Fole into an ice ball, sending him sliding over the cliff. The landing is a bad one, but he survives with no injuries. Meanwhile, John enters the palace and encounters the Empress. He identifies himself as a matchmaker sent by the king, but the Empress says she has no desire to marry because there are no heroes left. She jumps from a cliff to put his bravery to the test, and John rushes to her aid. Impressed by his bravery, the Empress uses her gown as a parachute and begins to descend softly. However, John inadvertently punctures the gown, causing both of them to drop at high speeds. It appears that they would perish in agony, then Fole emerges with a set of new wings and saves both of them. Later that night, the three set up camp in the middle of the forest before continuing on their way back to the kingdom. During this time, Fole tells John to leave the Empress behind and flee to rescue himself, but he refuses. The Empress, who has been listening in on their talk, is taken aback by John's loyalty. The three arrive in the kingdom the next morning when John is received as a hero. Everyone is surprised that John has returned alive from his assignment, which only adds to the king's growing disdain for him. Despite this, the king feels obligated to reward him once more. Later that night, John tells Fole about his love for the Empress and plans to pay her a visit. He climbs up to her window with some flowers, but their reunion is cut short when some courtiers enter carrying clothes for her to don. After some time, the Empress sees the king and is surprised to realize that he is the same age as her father. When John sees the two together outside, he becomes envious. The king wishes to marry the Empress the following day, but she is hesitant. To postpone it, she explains that it is her family tradition to marry with a unique ring. Unfortunately, the ring was lost in the sea. When the king hears this, he becomes infuriated and assigns John another hard duty. On the same night that Fole is contemplating John's unusual conduct, he sees the ghost of a whale sailing through the sky. When Fole consults with the sun, moon, and wind, he discovers that the ring is hidden inside the belly of a massive whale, which has now changed into an island. John and Fole go out in the early hours of the morning to find the whalefish, only to find her chained. The foal is able to talk with the whale and discovers that she was put in this position as a punishment by some sailors. Her transgression? For pleasure, she swallowed several ships. She was young and naive at the time, but she now regrets her actions. Soon later, the whale tears, which inspires John to make her sneeze and break free from the bonds. So they ride towards the whale's nostrils and use the tip of foal's feathers to tickle its innards. The idea works, and the enormous creature begins to itch itself. In the process, it breaks free from all of its bonds and, after decades, releases the captive ships. As a thank you, the whale gives John and Fole the valuable ring. The two proceed to the Empress's window to deliver the ring in the next scene. Their presence, however, is not overlooked, as guards and a courtier discover them through a scope and rush to apprehend John. The uproar awakens the king, who quickly grabs his gun and runs to his window. When the king sees Fole, he shoots him without hesitation. The guards, on the other hand, break into the bedchamber and capture John, falsely accusing him of stealing the king's maiden. Following this, the king prepares to marry the empress, but she asks that he revitalize himself using a potion passed down from her grandmother in order to buy more time. She expects him to bathe in three cauldrons, one with boiling water, one with cold water, and one with boiling milk. The approach is smart, but it causes even more issues for John. A courier tells the king to test the cauldrons on John before committing himself to the process, suspecting that it is a trap. The empress discreetly tells Fole at night that she knows how to negate the effect of the boiling fluids. 
she discloses that by placing her grandmother's ring in the first cauldron, a feather from the firebird in the second, and the flower of life and death that grows at the end of the world in the third cauldron, the lethal effects will be neutralized. She argues that the accomplishment of this scheme is critical to John's survival. Fole, who was injured previously by a gunshot, is aware that this is a perilous assignment that could lead to his death. But he sets out to find the flower for the sake of his best friend. Because he can no longer fly, he uses his lightning speed to travel to the end of the earth. The flower ultimately finds Fole, but it warns him that whoever plucks it will die. Despite the foreboding omen, Fole plucks the flower in order to save John. The monarch hypocritically declares in the morning that he is giving John a second opportunity and orders him to jump into the cauldrons. Because he believes he is about to die, he fearlessly confesses his love for the empress. He then leaps into the boiling water while the empress successfully throws the ring into the first cauldron, allowing John to escape unhurt. The firebird drops a feather in the second cauldron, keeping John safe once more. Meanwhile, Fole delivers the flower just in time for John to be saved in the last cauldron. After completing his rejuvenation successfully, John appears before the Empress, who is astounded by his metamorphosis. The king is equally surprised, and he leaps into the first cauldron, believing that the recipe genuinely makes people younger. But as soon as he does, a massive bubble appears and swallows him whole. The people of the kingdom scoff at his misfortune and begin chanting for John instead. Meanwhile, the Empress and John detect that Fole has gone missing and go seeking him. They soon discover him sitting peacefully, plucked flower in hand, waiting for his death. The Empress, on the other hand, discloses that the flower's warning was only a test to see how brave the person who selected it was. She further clarifies that if Fole hadn't picked it, he would have died, but he won't now. When Fole hears this, he joyfully stands up and embraces his best friend. The audience celebrates John in the last scene, demanding that he become the next king. He gladly accepts and promises to defend the realm with all his strength. The film concludes with John and the Empress finally married and taking over the kingdom as the newly enthroned king and queen.